The, um, we have the first case is case number four, having children as the climate changes. And the question is, assuming the direst predictions of climate change, is it unethical to have children? Okay, so over here, team one, you may, oh, sorry, let me get my pencil here. Um, team, it seems you can turn over the questions. Team one has two minutes to confer. And I will let you know when that time is up. Okay, please stop. Team one, you will now have 10 minutes to answer the question and present the case. Uh, more than one team member can present, but only one member may speak at a time, and I'll give you warnings at three minutes and one minute. Please begin. Okay, hello judges. Hello, University of Maryland, Baltimore County. It's an honor to be here today. Um, so the question asked for this case is, assuming the direst prediction of climate change, is it unethical to have children? And it's Sacred Heart's position that no, it is not unethical to have children. So just to quickly, um, so we're using the moral framework of libertarianism motivated by one's individual sense of flourishing. So libertarianism states that one's liberty should not be restricted unless it's the case that they, their actions impede on another person's liberty. And so we're saying that while some families may feel moral pressure to not have children due to the harms of climate change that are rising, um, other people may not feel this moral pressure and they should have the right to be able to create their families in the way that they wish and be supported in this. Because while overpopulation is an environmental issue, having children is not. So our argument consists of four points. Um, the first being that today's children will grow up to be the people who formulate the solutions to these problems. The second being that there have been past threats the human race has dealt with in which they continued having children and we see this as being moral. The third argument on our side is that everyone will experience some sort of hardship at some point in their lives. And the fourth argument is that having children now can act as incentive to make these important changes now in, um, for the benefit of the environment. So going back to our first argument that today's children are going to be the ones who grow up to be these scientists, scientists, scientists politicians, and engineers and advocates who work to formulate the solutions to the problem of climate change. So to stop progress is basically to go in reverse. So we're saying that to limit the good of having children um, is essentially to limit the futures of everyone by taking away from the solution to the problem, which is going to be the ideas that these people grow up to formulate. 
Our second argument is that there have been many past threats that the human race has dealt with in which having children was still considered moral, in which they still had children. So, for example, <coughs> should people have been having children during the Cold War when there was risk of nuclear annihilation? During slavery, should people have been having children when there was a threat that their child could be sold? In totalitarian states where they're subject to violence and harsh ruling, should they have been having children um, even though there was this threat of this harm? So our point is that we see that despite these hardships, despite these threats that they experienced, people kept on having children and kept the human rights, um, they, kept having, they kept reproducing and we see that this was moral because hardship doesn't cause people to be any less human and any step to limit having children, any step to stop reproduction is a step towards inhibiting what is naturally built into human biology and evolution. So our third argument is that if hardship, if the hardship of climate change is considered a reason to not have children, then we should also consider that everyone will experience some sort of hardship at some point in their life. So for example, almost 50% of Americans are diagnosed with mental illness. 38% of Americans are predicted to be diagnosed with cancer at some point in their life, and one in five women are victims of rape. And children are also born into many other hardships, including um, ab abuse, including terminal illness, paralysis, and the list goes on of bad things that can happen to people throughout their life. So if we're saying that the issue of climate change and that the hardships that come from climate change is a reason not to bring children into this world, then no one should be having children because everyone will experience some sort of hardship at some point in their life. And life can be meaningful despite or even because of this hardship. So the fourth argument on our side is that having children now can act as an incentive to make these important changes. So this political discussion, this, um, this discussion encourages political action against things that keep on contributing to the problem of climate change. For example, um, carbon emissions. So basically the problem lies in political decisions that allow for these malpractices to keep on going. So we need to shift to cleaner energy sources, we need to change the way we use land, and we need to um, decrease the carbon emissions that we're um, imparting onto this environment in order to fix the problem <coughs> of climate change. Um, because the problem doesn't lie in having children, the problem lies in technology and politics working together in order to formulate a solution to this problem. And there is hope that this can happen. And we would also like to recognize that with, pro with issues like climate change, there's always a lever somewhere else that doesn't have to do with humans. So while we see that overpopulation is a large issue that contributes to climate change, there is no direct, oh, because the more that more people on this earth, the more carbon emissions, the more impact on the environment and strain on the environment's resources. But we see that there's no way to limit having children that doesn't run into deontological problems. So that we should have, so there are ways to indirectly make this change in order to contribute to the solution. For example, um, if you give women better education, if you give women more rights and better health care, this will cause a natural reduction in family size because it would cause um, these women to start their families la at a later time and have fewer children and therefore um, contribute to the solution by lessening the carbon, carbon, um, lessening the carbon footprint by lowering po population change. And it is clear that a reduction in population size will do better for the state as well as for the children, and so then it'll make it so there are more people to con therefore contribute to the solution. So the other side would be arguing that, um, our, they would be arguing for the maintenance of a more sustainable future in which people can enjoy the earth, and they would most likely be using the ethical moral framework of non-maleficence, which states to do no harm. So they would be saying that bringing children into this world while climate change is becoming a larger and larger problem would therefore put them in harm's way and bringing children into the world will increase the strain on the environment, therefore putting the environment in harm's way as well. So this side would consist of um, three arguments. The first they, first, they would argue that there are harms to climate change. 
that there are harms to climate change that come in the form of environmental and economic costs, that um, the second they would argue that these children are being brought into this world with no opportunity to do anything about it, and third, they would argue that increasing the number of children in this world will therefore increase the burden on the environment. So going back to the first argument on this other side, they would argue that there are major harms that are coming from climate change that are only accelerating, including things like re increased risk of natural disaster, and rising temperatures, and um, desertification, and species extinction, and the, and the effects of climate change also affect many sectors of the economy, spreading from healthcare to agriculture, and that if something isn't done about this problem, then um, there will be no like, fix to this problem. And secondly, um, their second argument would tie into this first argument in saying that these children will be brought into this world with no opportunity to do anything about it, so they will have to deal with all these major issues that are growing in this world and they won't even have a chance to um, do anything about it before they're brought into this world. And the, third and the third argument on this other side would be that bringing more people into this world will therefore increase the burden on the environment because each person has a, um, has a carbon footprint on, has a carbon footprint that therefore contributes to the problem. And Sacred Heart would respond to this entire side by saying that we see that there are major harms that come from climate change However, we don't think that there are reason to stop being human. And like I said before, I'd like to reiterate that overpopulation is an environmental issue, but having children is not. And people should be able to build the families that they desire to build and be supported in this. Um, and so we see humans have survived through multiple, um, One minute. through We've survived through numerous ice ages, plagues, and many other significant events. And we see that human life is always looking to expand. Like we look at the, we look at Mount Everest, we look at space, we look at the deep trench of the ocean, and we say we want to expand, we want to explore, like we want to, um, we want to continue being human. And basically, we, Sacred Hearts feels that we want to be optimistic as well as responsible, as there is no, nothing irresponsible of being human. And again, um, overpopulation is an environmental issue, and having children is not. And therefore, um, it is morally ethical to have children given climate change. Thank you. Thank you very much. Judges, can you please um, score the team one on the left-hand side of your sheet and um, using the judge scoring rubric, total them on the bottom